Hello, and welcome to Exploring Art. My name is Justin Roof, and I'm an artist. What I like to do is start with a drawing, transfer it onto a chalkboard, and then paint it with these acrylic markers. In this series of videos, I'm going to teach you how I do it. And we're also going to learn about the elements of art. For each lesson, there will be a warm-up activity and an exercise. For today's exercise, we're going to practice drawing what we see. Before we begin, you should gather your materials for the exercise. You're going to need a pencil or a pen, paper, and something to draw. Pick something that looks like fun to draw or something that you would like to learn to draw better. The ideal object for this exercise should be interesting to look at, but not too complex. You can pause the video to go gather your materials and bring them back to your workspace. Once you're ready to start, set out your materials and press play. Let's begin. There are seven elements of art. Line, shape, form, color, value, texture, And space. We're going to learn about each of these elements over the next few lessons, and today we're going to focus on line. Line is one of the most fundamental elements of art. A line is just about any mark you make on a canvas or a piece of paper. Uh, you can use line to express any of the other elements of art. Lines can be straight, they can be expressive, they could be calming, they could be energizing, they can imply space or texture. How would you describe these lines? Can you think of any other kinds of lines? I think we're ready to start warming up. The following exercise works best if you gather your pencil and your paper and follow along with me. I will tell you an exercise, I will show you how to do it, and as soon as you feel like you understand the exercise, you start to do it as well. Just start doing it along with me. Pick up your pencil and get ready to draw. Exercise one is parallel lines. Without using a ruler, I want you to draw a straight line. And just above or below that line, I want you to draw another straight line. Maybe put a little bit of space in between them. And just keep repeating this until you feel like you're getting some nice, evenly spaced, parallel lines. Nice and long. And I want you to notice which part of your body is doing the drawing, where it's happening in your arm or in your elbow or in your wrist. For me, drawing these long straight lines, it's all about my elbow, kind of keeping my wrist straight and drawing from my elbow. Okay. Now for the next exercise, we're going to draw right on top of this. So. I hope you guys had enough time to practice your own parallel lines, but I'm going to draw right on top of my drawing because right now we're not worried about uh, what the final product is going to look like or anything like that. It's more about exercising those muscles that we're going to use to do the drawing. So I'm going to do some more parallel lines, but this time I'm going to go in a different direction. So these ones were kind of diagonal. This time I want to do some horizontal parallel lines. Parallel lines. Two lines go in the exact same direction that never intersect. 
I mean, they're intersecting those lines because I drew them earlier. So what I want to do now, so you go ahead and do a few more of these horizontal parallel lines. And for the last set of parallel lines, I'm going to do some vertical parallel lines. But um, this time, instead of just drawing with one stroke, I want you to try drawing up, down, up, down, up, down. So we're just changing the direction that we draw the lines in. Okay? And you get a nice little rhythm going. Introducing some new muscles into the practice. That one kind of intersected a little bit, but that's okay. That's okay. Sometimes your body makes a, an improvisation you weren't planning on. Okay, so there we go. There's parallel lines. Um, and don't worry if your drawing doesn't look just like mine. In fact, it probably won't, and that's okay, because it's not about the drawing. Again, it's just about doing the practice. Uh, let me take a look at what I've got next for you. Okay, this one's good. And again, you can draw right over your drawing. I'm going to give you, uh, I'm going to use a fresh piece of paper just so you can see what I'm doing better. But these aren't, again, these aren't about the drawings. This is just about doing the exercise. So if you try doing one of these exercises on a different page in your, in your sketch pad or in your journal or whatever, you're going to end up going through all of your paper really quickly. So it's not a big deal to draw right on top of your other drawings. Um, in fact, when we're all finished up here, I'll show you what my first attempt at this looked like. It's just a lot of scribbles on top. So the next thing that we're going to do is broken lines. And that, we're still doing them going in a direction. And I still want you to draw parallel lines, but I want you to do like a dotted line. And this time I want you to notice that and just as soon as you know what we're doing here, just go ahead and start drawing. You don't need to wait for me to stop or tell you to start or anything like that. Just start as soon as you feel comfortable starting. But I do want you to notice that when we do these broken lines, that a lot of that movement that on the long straight lines that we were doing that was happening in your uh, elbow and in your arm, now they're kind of more happening in your wrist and in your hand. And, you know, I'm still moving my arm along to kind of keep up with where I am on the drawing. But the actual muscle group that I'm using to draw these little marks is more in my hand than it is in my arms or my shoulder. Let's see if I can do them a little faster from further away. That's pretty good. How's yours looking? So there we go. I got some broken lines. You can keep drawing them. I'm just going to look at my lesson plan here and see what I've got planned next. Okay. The other thing I want to do is go the other way with the broken lines, just like we did with the parallel lines. This one is kind of hard for me, so maybe for you it'll be easy. But for me, this direction for broken lines is a little more challenging. Feels funny to me. You can go ahead and do that. And then if you want to go horizontal and then do back and forth, just like we did with the straight lines. Let me just spend a couple more seconds doing this, and then we'll move on to the next thing. All right. So the next thing that we're going to do, this one's a lot of fun. It's called the wiggle. So the wiggle is, I want, it's, kind of, it's kind of like a tornado. We want to start big and then small, big and then small, big and then small, big strokes and to small strokes. And if you want to really get some practice in, try making them tight. See if you can do some tight wiggles. Maybe a really big one that goes into a small. And again, notice that I'm just drawing right on top of my drawings, because it's not, it's not about that drawing. It's just about doing the practice. 
So that's like the tornado wiggle. The other kind of wiggle, it's good practice and also kind of fun to draw. It's like a sound wave. And that's when that starts out small, gets big, and then gets small again. Small, gets big, and then gets small again. You know, so even when I'm drawing, my voice gets louder when I draw the big part. It just feels like a sound wave. So listen to the sound that pencil makes when you're doing it. It's almost like you're playing an instrument. So that rhythm that you have in your hands is going to communicate onto the paper in front of you. People are going to be able to visually see that rhythm that you're drawing with. Isn't that cool? All right. So let's change it up a little bit. Let's change it up. How are you feeling? You're feeling like you're starting to warm up a little? Me too. All right. So for this next one, we're going to do circles. And I want you to really, when you try to draw a circle very carefully, sometimes you can do pretty good. You can do OK. But to me, it's a lot easier to just move your whole arm, OK? So I've got my whole arm moving. And what I want you to do is really just fill up the page with as many quick circles as you can. And don't worry if they're not perfect. It's not a big deal. We're just trying to draw as many as we can, as quickly as we can. And the way to do that is just move your arm in a circle. See, this one's kind of an oval. That's OK. I'm not going to worry about it. I got to look at my screen to see where I've still got space on the paper so you can see it. Let's see if I can draw one down here. And I'm using a really big piece of paper. So if you've got a big piece of paper, that's going to be a big help. And again, I don't even care if I'm drawing on top of other circles. I'll fill in with a lot of little circles, maybe. Yeah, that's cool. So here you go. Doing some circles. Now that we've spent some time doing some circles, how about a figure eight? So this one... I, this, like these curly motions, these are ones that I really enjoy drawing. So I'm going to draw right on top of my circles here because I don't want to keep wasting more paper. But See that? So I just want you to keep getting that figure eight going. Just keep drawing. You just want to move the paper, or move the pencil, I'm sorry. And then as you're doing this, what if you change directions? Can you do that? Okay, and now I want to try one going the other way. I want a vertical figure eight. So I'm going to have it intersect right in the middle, and I want you to just go ahead and do the same thing. Again, change directions. How's that feel? Pretty good? So now for the next couple seconds, I want you to do a whole bunch of figure eights. And what I'm going to do is put them inside of my circles for two reasons. Number one, I think it looks kind of cool. And secondly, this gives me a lot of practice making different size curving shapes, different size figure eights. We just want to kind of energize that paper, energize your pencil, energize your body, just keep things moving, get that, get that flow going. There you go. And again, I don't care if it looks good, I don't care if it looks bad, I'm just moving the pencil. I just want to keep things moving. we go. All right. So I just spend a couple seconds doing that. Feeling good. We've moved our bodies. We've moved our arms. We've moved the pencil. 
So now we're gonna do a little bit of what I like to call like a cool down exercise here. So this one is gonna be a lot less just movement in our in our arms, and we're gonna be we're gonna draw a little more carefully now. We're gonna slow things down a little bit. So this one is gonna be a contour blob, and a contour blob is you start by drawing any shape blob that you want. And notice I didn't just connect it and stop. I'm just kind of following this contour line more than once. So here, let me move that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of imagine like if this was like, if I was looking at a map, how this would be like, have you ever seen that on a map, like a topographical map, where this might be like the top of a mountain? or inside of the ocean or something where you see a little bit of space in between. So it's kind of combining our curving shapes with our parallel lines. I mean these, you know, these obviously aren't straight lines, but we want to create these kind of marks that are parallel to the other marks that we've made. And now that I've kind of filled in this big blob, I'm going to look around it and see if I can put some other blobs in there. Just whatever kind of shape you want. You just kind of fill up the page. Again, if you've got a big piece of paper or a small piece of paper, whatever size piece of paper you have, I want you to really think about using all of that space. Don't just draw one little corner, something like that. You really want to fill in the space that's available to you, because that's, that's one of the elements of art we're going to learn about later, but I think it's something that every artist needs to consider, is how they're actually using the space that they're given. Okay. So once you've got your exercises all done and you fit and you're ready, I'm going to give you one last thing. And this time you're going to be on your own. You can do this. I trust that you've got everything you need to get started. I'm just going to play a song. It's going to play for about three minutes. And during that time, I just want you to draw whatever kinds of lines come to your mind. Um, I'll put some images on the screen to maybe give you a little bit of inspiration, but you're really just on your own now. You can do the kinds of lines that we've already done. You could do different lines that we haven't done that you can think of that are different. And uh, you're just going to do whatever you want for three minutes. And the goal here is just to keep that pencil moving. I don't want you to stop drawing. I just want you to just keep drawing throughout the entire song. And once the song's over, put your pencil down and then we'll start the lesson.
You have one minute remaining. Pencils down. All right, how'd that feel? You all warmed up? You ready to start the exercise? So um, I'm going to show you two different ways to draw things that you see. So you're going to need to get your object. Um, I'm going to do this little ceramic guy right here. I think that he looks pretty fun to draw and I can choose the angle that I want to draw him from. So I'm just going to do him kind of, well, maybe I'll do sideways. That looks like it might be an interesting way for me to look at him. And the first way that a lot of people will draw what they see is uh, it's called contour line drawing. And basically what that is, is you are going to look at the object and so your eyes should actually be on the object more than it's going to be on your actual pencil moving on the paper. But what you're going to do is you're just going to kind of like match up. So I'm looking at this point right here on the top of his head. And then I'm going to move my eyes down that little, see how there's like one little straight line going down there. I'm just going to move my eyes. And as I'm moving my eyes along the contours of the shape, I'm also moving my pencil to kind of match where I am on the shape. And if you, oops, if you find that some of your proportions are a little bit off or they're too long or they're too short or they're you know getting kind of squashed or whatever um, that's okay you can just kind of go in and fix things as you go along again this is this is why we practice we these are the skills that we want to improve so we practice in order to get better at these skills so I think for this part I'm not gonna do this leg going up here I'm just going to keep following with my eyes the whole outline of the shape. So this part's going to really require me to focus. So I might not be quite as talkative as I might normally want to be during an art lesson. Oop, I feel like that angle's not right. All those little details, that kind of comes forward here a little bit. And then I'm going to go back here. And this is oops, it's a little too curved. So we just want to follow very slowly. And it feels okay. And if we want, we can even do the contours if you can kind of see that shadow there. It's not super strong shadow, but I think it's kind of fun to draw in those shadows as well. So now that I've got kind of the outline contours, I'm gonna do the same thing. And you can notice like there's a little bit, it gets really dark in here, but this line kind of comes up right there and down. So now I'm just gonna trace that one. I'm gonna follow it with my eyes. 
notice where this lines up with his nose. So if you've got little landmarks on your object, it's good to kind of just match them up against each other. This is a very, uh, this takes a lot of practice. So if you're not immediately, you know, getting the results that you want, just keep in mind that that's why we do these practices so that we can strengthen these skills and we can get better at drawing. So that's the whole point of doing the practice. Oh, I rushed it. I didn't quite get that line right. And then I can see that like that part kind of goes up there. I feel like this needs to curve a little more. Okay. Down here, I feel like I went a little too flat there. This comes down a little bit more. So at this point, if you haven't already, I want you to go ahead and start looking at your object and start drawing your thing just by doing the contour lines. So just follow along wherever you see contour lines. And again, if this is your first time doing it, don't expect that you're going to get everything exactly perfect. This is just practice. I can tell already I made the top way too long compared to the bottom. That bottom leg needs to be much higher up. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to redraw it right on top of my drawing. I'm not even going to erase where I think it should go. This is just one of the two ways of drawing what we see. Some people are really good at this. It's always impressive when somebody can just look at something and get it right, right off the bat. Take your time, go slow. And remember, keep your eyes on the thing that you're drawing. You wanna be looking at the thing you're drawing more than you're looking at your pencil. I know it's very tempting to look at your drawing as opposed to the thing that you, your object but really if you want to draw what you see you got to look at the thing that you're drawing I know it sounds funny but it's true and it's it's a habit you have to get into if you want to start drawing the world around you so I'm just gonna go through and reinforce some of those lines yeah not the best, not the worst. Looks okay. Yeah, good enough. So that's one way of uh, drawing what you see. Contour line drawing. And you can do it with anything. You can do it with your little object. Um, you can do it with, like, if you've got something with some organic shapes, it's fun to kind of practice drawing different kinds of shapes. So I want you to look at a whole bunch of different objects, There's a whole bunch of different things, and think of different kinds of things that are fun to draw. And it doesn't, because you're using your eyes, because you're just following along with your eyes, it doesn't even have to be a little thing. Like, you can look out the window, and maybe there's a tree in your yard, or there's a house across the street, or anything that you want to draw, any size, just pick a point and start following along with your eyes and just draw what you see. All right, so I'm going to clean up my art space and um, I'm going to give you another two minutes of music to just continue drawing and uh, then I will show you one last way to draw what you see. All right, have fun working.
All right, um, if you need additional time, take it. Just pause the video, put on your own music, or you can listen to the song over again if you want two more minutes, and just continue working on your drawing until you feel satisfied that you're done. Um, and, but if you're ready to move on, I'm gonna show you the, the other way to draw what you see. So this is kind of closer to what I would typically do um, for my method. Uh, I like to think of things in form. So when we think about contour line drawings, we're making like a two-dimensional drawing of a thing uh, just using our lines on paper. But if we start thinking about the things that we see as a form, as a three-dimensional object that exists in space, you know, that like is bigger when it gets closer and things like that, then we kind of have to change the way we draw a little bit. And so what I would do is just start blocking it out. And what that means is I'm looking at all of the shapes that I see. So like this part of my thumb is kind of like an oval right there, right? And so I'm gonna take the pencil and this is more similar to the way we were drawing when we were doing the exercises, but I'm still looking at the thing that I'm drawing. So I'm looking at my thumb I'm not looking at my pencil and I'm just kind of following along the best of my ability where those contour lines are happening and if I start looking too much at my at my drawing and not enough at my subject then it's easy to get kind of locked in on whether or not it looks right and thinking about whether or not it looks right, it kind of puts a lot of your focus on uh, what your brain tells you it should look like instead of what your eyes are telling you it does look like. So really you want to trust your eyes on this. You don't want to trust your imagination too much. You just want to trust what you're seeing. And in, the, in future lessons, I am going to talk to you about drawing from the imagination because personally, uh, drawing from the imagination is one of my favorite ways to draw and it's a lot of fun and it's rewarding but really most of the skill that you develop as an artist in drawing is going to be based primarily on the practice of drawing what you see so this might not be as much fun as drawing dragons and unicorns and other cool stuff from your imagination but this is the exercise that's going to get you to develop those muscles faster it's going to make you a more accurate artist it's going to make the things that you draw when you do draw from your imagination it's going to help them look more convincing as long as you if you know how to draw things in reality then you're going to start to be able to draw things from your imagination as well so some of my shapes might be a little bit off here that's okay, this is just a practice. And I want you to do the same thing. I want you to either get a different object or if you wanna hold your object so that you can get your hand in there. Some things that are fun to draw, to me, um, I like to draw plants, I like to draw food, I like to draw my shoes. Um, maybe if you've got like a favorite toy or something like that. The important thing is that you're really looking at what you're drawing and you're really trusting your eyes. I want you to really rely on what you're seeing and again just really focus all of your attention onto your object and even if it's it doesn't have to be something small that you can hold in your hand like what we're doing right now but you can apply the same practice to large things that are further away. Just make sure that you're really looking, that you're really drawing the things that you see. It's starting to come into shape here. So for this, 
I'm even gonna like start shading in those parts that look like they kind of fall into the shadows. And notice that I'm drawing my thumb here. And if you look, you can see that the other side of my hand, that angle needs, I need to add that other side of my hand. And my finger almost, like it intersects with my thumb right there. And it intersects with my little tiki right there, but then I can see my finger on top. So all of this is just me going in and refining the lines. I can tell already that I was using, relying too much on my imagination to do his face because it doesn't quite line up. But we keep working with them and get closer. I know you're seeing a lot of lines and maybe some lines that aren't really there, but this is just kind of the way I draw. I draw a lot of lines and then I figure out which ones look the most accurate or in some cases don't even look the most accurate, just look the nicest. And then I'll redraw those ones. And I can also feel that my pencil is starting to sort of not be as sharp as I like it. So it's important that you sharpen your pencils ahead of time. I actually have an extra right here. So now that I've kind of got a sense of where all of my shapes are going to be, now I want to go in and kind of refine those shapes. Oops. I moved my hand, so now he's kind of at a different angle. So there you go. So I'm going to give you some more time to just kind of practice drawing your character or your object or the thing that you've decided to draw. Um, I'm going to work on my drawing a little bit more. and. Um, I'll give you another two minutes of music for you to work on your drawing. And then I'll do a quick check-in with you. And that's going to be it.
is looking okay. One thing that I like to do, uh, especially with a lot of pencil drawings, is I like to go in with like a pen or maybe even like a pencil that's got a little bit of a more of a tip, kind of darken things in. And so what that allows me to do is, I, especially when I draw using a bunch of little sketch marks like that, is this is my opportunity to kind of look at that and I'm not just tracing what I see, but I'm kind of also choosing which of those lines that I drew do I really want to accentuate? Like which ones look the most like what I want? So even when we're using the pen, like in a comic book or something like that, we're still working on the artwork. We're still improving. We're not just tracing, but we're making decisions about which lines we think are going to make this piece look the way that we want it to look. I'm just going to go through do it real quick. You know, this guy's got like a This has a little chip right there. And his nose has a little bit of depth. So there you go. Oh, he's got rings around his eyes. All right, well, there you go. Just make sure that you really look at all those little details. And if you want to really improve your drawing, this is the thing that you need to do. You need to just keep looking at things around you and drawing those things that you see. It's the best way for you to improve your skills. And it really doesn't take that much time. Just give yourself 30 minutes, even 10 minutes a week, a day, depending on how much time you want to put into it. And the more practice you do, the more improvement you're going to see, the easier it's going to become, and the quicker you're going to be able to draw. So just spend the rest of uh, the next few minutes finishing up your drawing. If you like this lesson, come on back for the next one. We're going to explore another one of the elements of art. I'm going to give you another fun art project to do. And until then, I will see you next time. Keep your pencil sharp and enjoy your art.